The challenge with transition is to get the mentality to line up with the position. Yeah. Or when you really need them to respond like leaders, yeah. they will be yeah. right. in the staff room right. rather than lead right. with the staff of authority. Amen. It is the silence of the 11 that says you are not ready yeah. to be a real leader. Yes, sir. Because you still think like where you came from. And if you think like where you came from, then you cannot walk into where you're going. Oh, so we must be prepared to go through detox so that we can make the transition in the way we think. I'll give you another example. Somebody came to my church and they were preaching, you know, they got to all stirred up and they start preaching about faith, bless God. And I got faith and I just believe God can do anything, bless God. I believe he can do anything. He said, speak to the mountain and the mountain to be moved. And in our churches, you know, we respond. So he said, speak to the mountain. He said, oh yeah. And the mountain will be, moved. oh yeah. Speak to the mountain, oh yeah. And the mountain has got to go, oh yeah. Speak to the mountain. You know, and everybody's going with it. As he said, I just believe that God is going to cancel out all your death. They said, oh yeah. And they were, oh, that was a closing point. People went to dancing and shouting. And I was about to shout too. Until I thought about who all owed me. And suddenly I realized that one man's miracle is another man's misery. And the only reason that people thought that that was a good point is because they were in debt and didn't have anybody indebted to them. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. I said, if we can believe that God is just gonna supernaturally cancel out the debt and delete it out of the computer, can we just believe that he would give you some money so you could pay me back? Yes. It is, it is the faith of the fallen. Yes, sir. It is the mentality of the mundane. It is the propensity we have to bring God down to how we think. When he said, my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways. And so what happens is, sometimes you promote someone to this level, but they still think like this. And when you really need them to be a leader, it is the silence of the lambs. So I was thinking, <laughs> the one guy out of all the 12 who had something to say was Peter. Now I know, I know, I know you don't like Peter. I understand that. I admit that Peter had his issues. I mean, it was cussing Peter. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> oh, oh, denying Peter. I, I know he, he was kind of hard on the insurance of the ministry because it was violent. Peter, you remember the one cut the ears off and you had to go behind them and put the ears on? Yeah, and, and oh, denied Jesus and went to cussing and all of that. And he might not have been the first choice. Why is it out of all of these men, there is something about Peter that he has selected to preach on the day of Pentecost above all of the other disciples. It is not that he is the most articulate because later we will learn that he is unlearned, untrained, underdeveloped. So it is not his intellectualism that got him chosen. No, it is his leadership. 
because in times of indecisiveness at least Peter would make a decision was it not Peter when the wind tossed night was coming and the winds were blowing and the lightning was flashing and all of the other numb sheep were sitting in the boat saying it's a ghost Peter jumped up and said hey Lord if it's you bid me to come and he stepped out on the water shove your neighbor and say take a step man Get off the boat where it's safe and take a step into the unfamiliar. Get into something where nobody can get you out but God. Step into the land of the supernatural. Take a step. Announce to your neighbor, tell him I'm getting ready to take a step. Oh, you sounded like you're getting ready to take uh, milk of magnesia. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to take a step. It's going to be shaky. I'm going to get my feet wet. I've never walked out here before, but I refuse to stay on the boat with the deadbeats. I'm called to take a step. So I came to C3 to tell you, you wasted your time and you wasted your money and you wasted your plane ticket and your hotel room. If all you're gonna do is go back and rock on the same boat that you were rocking in before you got here. I want every leader in here to take a step somewhere, right, left, forward, backward, just step somewhere, just. When you get back home, do something that you have never done before. Go somewhere that you have never been before. Establish something fresh and creative and new. God forbid that you be exposed to all of this and shut up and do nothing. It is a silence. Somebody praise our God in here. So sit with me, I'm almost done. That's my first close. He says to him, Peter, thou art the rock. In one, tra one, one translation is Simon, which literally means unstable. Thou art Cephas unstable you have become stone inconsistent you have become consistent lamb you have become a leader and upon this rock I will build my church another note he says flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. If all you get is what we teach, you have been cheated. If while I am speaking in generals, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in specifics, then you have been fed. If all you get is what is recorded on the CD, then you will repeat what I said. And flesh and blood has revealed it unto you. But if I, while I am speaking to you in the natural, 
the Holy Spirit is speaking to you in the supernatural. And he said, when you get back home, that's how you need to handle so and so and so. And that's what's wrong with Fred over there. And you need to move this over there. I don't even know who Fred is. But while I'm speaking to you, the Holy Spirit is talking to you. Oh, God, I feel the presence of the Lord. See, See what separates our leadership conference, you can go to leadership conferences anywhere. I just left one with CEOs and executives and major corporations, pe people who, who run major corporations sit up and come up with great ideas and we teach each other how, how, how to lead corporately. That's wonderful, that's nice. You can get that anywhere. You don't have to come here to get that. What sets this apart is that while I give you my natural, he ought to put on top of it his super natural. Glory to God, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. Now think with me. He says, but my Father, which is in heaven. Now what makes this statement profound is when he said it. He is saying that Peter is getting direct, not information, but revelation. revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't go beyond information to revelation, you're not going to get this. You're not going to be able to lead on this level. You can get information anywhere, but you can only get revelation from one place. Flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my Father, which is in heaven. My God, when you think about when he said it, it becomes even more profound. Had he said it after the day of Pentecost, then I could attribute it to the falling and the coming of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because he said it before the coming of the Holy Spirit, in fact, he says it before the cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. That means that Peter was walking up under open heavens and he had access the information from the Father before the cross, before Pentecost, he had tied into the spirit line of communication. And all of a sudden, he was receiving from God. And here is the problem in the perception of the people in your congregation. If all they perceive is whose books you read, they will weary of following you because they can download the same books you do. They will only follow you when they believe that the pastor walks up under open heavens. That somehow you have tied into classified information. And upon this rock, yes, ooh, I better watch how I feel. Ooh, I feel some glory coming in here. I'm about to get right Pentecostal in here on you about right now. Woo! Y'all better hold my mule in here right now. <clears throat> Nobody is going to get dressed on their only day off and drive down the road and fight through the traffic and push past the ushers to hear you quote what they could have read in their living room. They want to hear you speak from heaven. everybody you can reach and say where did you get that from 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 where do you get that from where did you get that from where did you get that from where did you get that from that's what you were talking about fashion a while ago that's what lets you know when you dress good when somebody walks up to you and say where did you get that from 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 that's what you want to happen on Sunday morning. So people say, oh my God, where did he get that from? <laughs> then you're worth the trip. Then you're worth flying in to the conference. Then you're worth being the keynote speaker. Then you're worth sitting in the seat. But if all you're gonna do is repeat what others are saying, I'll stay at home and hear you later. 
Peter, in spite of his weaknesses, in spite of his proclivities, in spite of his issues, had tapped into classified information that was so astounding that Jesus said, whoa, flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you. Jesus said, I didn't teach that. That's not in the Beatitudes. That's not in my six tape series. That's not in my book you bought down at Walmart. But my Father, which is in heaven, and upon this rock, upon the rock of men who are able to hear from God, will I build my church. Now you gotta help me preach. Because I'm black, you know. And so we, we like to see the whole congregation get into the thing. It's kind of like this is a soul food seminar. You gotta get this. Touch everybody you can reach and build that church, build that church, build it. <laughs> build it, man. Build that thing. Build that thing. Build that church. 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 My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Build that church. Now, let me show you. you. Watch this. When you're building in a mason's fashion, you build from corners to corners. The building comes in the corner, okay? You lay the corner to the next level first. And then the next row of bricks or stone follow that corner stone. <laughs> so if you get the next level on that corner and you get it on this corner and you draw your line from corner to corner, then all of these other stones follow the corners but the building stones are not the following stones it's the corner stones the church is built by those who will take the risk of taking it to a whole nother level I guarantee you, if they were doing this, if they were doing what Ed is doing, where you are, you'd have been stupid to fly down here to get what you already had. People will come to hear you and to learn from you only when you take it to a whole nother level. So for those of you who have come to the leadership conference wanting to be leaders, then you must take the risk of speaking when the lambs are silent and set the corner to the next dimension of where the church is going. For upon this rock, not that one, this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell I forgot when I came here that y'all are two towel church I brought one towel y'all are two towel church you know I evaluate a church by how many tiles I need to get through. I brought a one-y to a two-y. <laughs> you know why you're a two-tile church? Because you take it to a whole nother level. Make some noise right now. Come on. Come on. My 
Alexander! 